today I'm interviewing my dear colleague and friend Fiona Wilkinson from her her bed. Um, she's just uh, recovering from COVID-19 and I thought it would be really interesting, well I'm fascinated really, about you know what was your experience and, and how have you got through all of this ordeal because it's been a bit of an ordeal. How many days was it that you've been ill for? Hi, yeah, good morning, Lou. Um, I have, I've been in seven days isolation and so I'm on day 10 now. So I'm out of isolation. Um, unfortunately, I was quite poorly. I think I got it a bit, uh, you know, a bit more than mildly. Um, but I'm glad to say I'm through the other side. Oh, fantastic. So, so Fee, we've been through a lot together. You and I, um, uh trained with Arvigo therapy together um in two back in 2017 i think it was so that makes it how many years ago is that quite a few my math isn't good <laughs> i think about 13 years ago so we've we've traveled the world uh training with Arvigo therapy and i have to say you are such a gifted and uh, a natural healer um and on top of all of that you're possibly one of the funniest people i know and your <laughs> your um your outlook on life is just uh just brilliant an absolute tonic so when times have got really tough i have to say that you've you've really pulled me through on many occasions <laughs> um and uh, I, I i swear it's your it's your tenacity of spirit that's that's um really been one of the the big pulls of getting you through all of this so just tell me walk me through so you you were you, you got ill um how how were you feeling what were what was your personal experiences obviously at this point i need to say that you're not an, um medically trained in any way and anything that we're going to say in this is your personal experience but i think they're really valid for people who are going to be hearing this who are just going to go okay well maybe i can grab a flannel or something and and help how did you use that at the the dead of night when things were really tough so how That's, was it um yeah i'm definitely not a nurse <laughs> um but there are lots of tips um so the story goes um i went skiing with my daughter who's 17 and we went to France and it was just at the beginning of the Corona COVID-19 uh, when it all just started and we were just starting to hear about it in China. So we did actually all manner as to whether we should make the decision to fly, but things weren't when really... Was when was that? That was um, the, just at the beginning of the last week of February. So we decided that we would go. Um, obviously we didn't know it was, it was quite as bad as it was. And uh, when we came back, about three to four days later, my 17-year-old daughter went down with the flu, followed by all the corona symptoms. Meanwhile, alongside that, the media, obviously, we were starting to hear things and actually how serious all of this was. So I did dial 111 and spoke to an operator there who said Gracie didn't fit the criteria. I think at that time, at the very, very beginning of this, she probably didn't fit the criteria, but as time went on, she most definitely did fit the criteria. And what was that criteria? So the criteria at the very beginning um, was if you had flu-like symptoms, I think it was just that. Um, and then, it, no, no, sorry, she had to, she didn't have the breathlessness. So she had to have breathlessness, which actually came later. Um, and I think looking back on it, she was 17 and, and they were just testing um, older people or children that had come back from holidaying in Italy. So that was at the very beginning. But also running alongside that, my son, Tom, who's 15, um, who is sort of a flexi border, all his mates came back from northern Italy. They'd all been skiing. And quite a few of them got put into quarantine. Um, so that was, and they were tested. So Tom was around all of them. So it could have been that Tom was actually was carrying it. We don't know. Um, and so, also the, the skiing, they found out that uh, France and Italy in the skiing lot, um, that was such a hotbed. Um, everyone then came back from their skiing holidays and they, they were a lot of carriers then as well. So you were in that perfect storm really, weren't you? You, you were flying in and, in and through Geneva as well. I think that was one of the hotbeds as well, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're doing sort of lots of, obviously doing all the hand washing 
and were really, really aware of it. Um, so when we came back, she obviously then got really poorly and as was actually really poorly for her. Um, she had all the symptoms, um, started off with a flu, headache, um, she couldn't move. She was literally in her bed for a good, part, good week, if not more. She then got better and then I said, let's just go for a walk where we walk with the dogs. She wanted to go back to college. She was desperate because she was missing out on so much. She had a really bad cough as well. Um, and a really bad sore throat and was just achy all over and felt really tired. So she did rally. We went for a walk and then she was back in bed. So she, it, uh, I suddenly thought, okay, this is, this is definitely, I think she definitely does have it. Um, and then she's in bed again for another week after that. So meanwhile, I'm nursing her. So I think they, they're talking about this thing called viral loading. I don't know what to believe. There's a lot of fake news out there. But viral loading would actually make sense to me with Gracie yeah. because of age and she's quite healthy and very fit so skiing airport aeroplane then back here and then me looking after her I think my I obviously got um you know a big viral load from her. yeah yeah so we did so I did have a good idea of what worked for her she would tell me mommy can you get me this mommy can you get me that that really worked that didn't work so um then when I became poorly I it starts off with um about two days before I was in bed, I felt exhausted, but I had been doing Joe Wicks every morning. Haven't we all been a bit exhausted with Joe Wicks? <laughs> I was bike riding, um, so I was doing more exercise than usual, so I thought I was just knackered. Um, but then I had, uh, previous to that, I had a low-grade sore throat for about a week. So I thought maybe I had mild symptoms that I might have caught from Gracie. I wasn't sure. It was just really unclear. Couldn't get tested, obviously. Um, but then on the Friday, I woke up absolutely exhausted, couldn't get out of bed, but I did. Um, I had a seven really days now. We're now seven days after you feeling weak and sore throat. So this is the first day. Well, a week before I was ill, I had a sore throat, and I felt a few days leading up to the Friday when I actually was bedridden, I felt knackered. And then I had Friday morning, I had a really, really bad headache, and that's how it started with Gracie like really bad, like migraine headache couldn't shift it, came back and I, was, I was felt quite weepy. Um, within two hours, I was man down in bed with flu and there, it's, there I stayed. So three to four days of flu. So Gracie actually was brilliant because I think she, she felt um, immune to it. She felt good. She actually came in and sorted me out because obviously then I was in isolation. So my husband, Tom, Max was actually away anyway, um, couldn't come near me. So I think that's, that's actually mentally, it's quite, I was lucky because I had Gracie to come in and just to ground me. But yeah. when you're down with it, um, you know, the fear, it's the fear when you're going down with it. So how did you manage this fear? Because this fear is going to be low level for everyone. I know that I'm really anxious all the time. It's probably the first time in my life that I've just had this low grade anxiety, um, luckily for me. But, um, uh, you know, a lot of people are dealing with this on a daily basis. I mean, everyone's different. When you've got a temperature, a high temperature, it, you just kind of get on with it. When you're in it, you just get on with it. Um, but I immediately stopped, uh, stopped watching the news. Yes, and that's really told, important. All of my family, I didn't want any stats. I didn't want to know, I mean, rightly or wrongly, I just wanted to be shut down into my bubble and just to, to cope with it mentally. That's, that was the, the, the flip for me that worked. Also, I allowed my dog in the bed. <laughs> Um, so for, for company um, and just um, just a lot of breathing so with the flu I thought okay I can do this I've got the flu I can do this the flu lasted for about three to four days and then very quickly after that I got a most excruciating sore throat like glass in my throat so uh, when, you say, when you say the flu you're just talking you're just you're talking about really bad head, achy joints, not being able to lift your head off the pillow, that kind of. High, high temperature, yeah, high temperature. I do know, you know, when you do hear about we, for, uh, to fight a virus, it's good that you've got a temperature and that's what kills it. And yeah. if you've got guts to ride that, but to be honest, if I'm really honest, I was quite fearful. So mm -hmm. I was on the paracetamol. And because Gracie had been really poorly, I thought, okay, this could spread even though 111 were telling us that she didn't have it, I actually thought, no, I think she does. 
So I got really stocked up, rightly or wrongly, with the paracetamol. So I had I had a couple of bottle, uh, boxes of paracetamol already. So how are you taking? So uh, a lot, actually, if I'm honest. I was really achy, so I was taking a thousand milligrams every four hours. Um, I then, I then, um, as as the flu uh, got a little bit better, I then went down to five hundred every four hours. Right. But so I could do that bit was okay it was the bit that followed after that it's really really weird so I then went into I think an adrenaline kind of wired state so my throat was really um really really sore I couldn't sleep at night I was coughing I had a really tight chest I had quite a bad pain in my right lower lung um which I knew okay so it's, it it felt like it gone into the bottom of my right lung and I was just sort of fearful that it would spread and that I was going to get pneumonia yeah. so um that's a, that's a common worry isn't it now because a lot of people are getting pneumonia yeah <laughs> yes definitely and and it's a tighter chest it, it it's uh the tightness is at the top so what I mentally I cope with it by telling myself well I can fill my lungs even though I've got a pain in my right lung I can fill my lungs still fill them up as in with air so I then did. What were you doing? What kind of breathing techniques were you doing? So every 20 minutes at least all the time um, I was breathing. So I, first of all, I put my hands at, my, at the back of my right lung and I breathe into there. And I would hold it if I could without coughing and then breathe out again. And I would do that about five times. Then I breathe into the sides. I put my hands on the sides of my lungs, breathe into there and, and then to, into the top. It was quite hard though because I kept coughing. Um, when it when it I was probably at the peak uh, when I could, when I was really coughing badly I was up in the night nights were definitely the worst I would get in the shower because this is what worked with my daughter um, I would get in a really steamy shower and uh, wipe a uh, Vic vapor rub on the bottom of the shower and I've got a Just actually lather it on the the bottom on the floor because it really sticks on it it's really good and on the sides. Um, so I was making like a vapor rub shower, steam shower, which really, really got me through the night. So I was right. in and out of the shower all night. I didn't care. Um, and um, our good friend Amanda actually um, said to me, because obviously my family were asleep. I didn't want to wake them up. And she um, actually said, why don't you take a big flask of tea to bed? Because that was the other thing, hot ginger and lemon tea, because you just want hot drinks, really soothes your throat. So I was doing that throughout the night, getting in and out of the shower. The bath just didn't do the same thing. So I sat in the steam, the steam bit. Yeah, definitely. I would then also lean forward. Over, I was on a stool in the shower and I'd get a flannel and I'd put a flannel to my mouth and cough into the flannel. God knows why, but that really helped with my lungs uh, rather than just coughing into the air. But obviously the steam helps to loosen the phlegm. But you've got, it's, a, it's, a, it's really strange. You have a dry throat, so it feels like you're not bringing anything up, but you know in your lungs that you need to bring it up. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. pummeled the, uh, so fists like that. Um, you just put it behind and, and would um, sort of uh, whack the back of my right lung as well to lodge, dislodge. I, I just felt like the virus was in my right lung and I was trying to move it. I mean, I, you know, obviously it isn't, but that's what it felt like. And yeah. then I would sleep. Um, on my side on almost sitting up actually again I've seen read different things about it and then also I'd also lie over a pillow over the edge of my bed and breathe into the, my back of my lungs um, and that yes. really helped. We're hearing reports that um, lying on your back is uh, really detrimental <laughs> to how your lungs can function so lying on your front or your side is re really going to help ease the, the lung function so you were finding well, you were sleeping, sitting up, basically, and then you were lying forward as well. And then I would have pillows sort of under me like this, and I would lie on my side, right. sort of up, but lying sideways. But it was, I, didn't wanna, I didn't want to lie on my back because it hurt my right, it, my right side was quite painful. Um, so the other, the other thing that really helped the cough was pineapple. Yes, you said this. I'm fascinated by okay. this. My sister, my big sister, was chatting to my husband and said, give me some pineapple, it's better than cough syrup. But obviously it's quite acidic, so you just, I just nibbled little bits of it. But yeah, it really did help my coughing. So you were um, just yeah. chunks of <laughs> pineapple? 
yeah, yeah. But the shower for me was a game changer. And also I would stand up in the shower and I'd stretch and put, and I think movement is really important, stretching, not lying in bed. Obviously yeah. when I had the temperature, I really didn't want to move and it was a marathon when I went to the loo. But once you feel like you can, even if you can sit on the edge of your bed, movement is is the key because it can't then it can't settle in your lung or it, it you know you can you can get rid of it or help to get rid of it and one of the things which um i i was really interested in is is you said that you there was no way sleep was possible because you just felt like your body was fighting that infection and i think the words you said were you just felt wired that you were on and you were in fight yeah. mode. yeah i really felt like that and for some reason the nights were were worse you know I would start coughing and I couldn't stop I think it was one night it was about three in the morning and actually Gracie came in I didn't call her or anything she came in and then she said right mum this is what you need to do and she actually calmed me down because I got into a bit of a state where I couldn't stop coughing and then it, and then your your chest tightens and then you panic you know it's that kind of so what it, kind of calming techniques mindfulness techniques did you do at that point when things were yeah. So she oh. brought in a bowl. She, I was out of the shower at this point. She brought me a bowl and said, "Get into bed and lean forward." So I had a tiller, a pillow, tiller, a pillow um, on my uh, on my belly, leaning forward, and she rested a bowl again, vapor rub, and we also used that oil inhaler. Um, I think that you sent over. That was good, but um, anything like that. So I'd lean over the bowl with a towel, like you would if you're trying to um, get rid of you know snot out of your nose, and just breathe into the back of my lungs, um, and that really helped. Right, right. The other, the other thing that's really good, weirdly, I never, I mean, it's, you know, it's not healthy. I know it's not healthy, but my husband had Listerine and I, ne I never use it. And I just started gargling that one night and that, that really helped. Right. Okay. Friend, yeah. Really helps. So, for some reason, mintiness or yeah. vapor rub, that kind of thing just feels like you can breathe and then you can calm down. And then Gracie was sort of banging the back of my, uh, just gently sort of banging the back of my lung. And then once you can calm the coughing down, then you can calm yourself down. And then I just do mindful breathing and then eventually fall asleep. And talk us through the mindful breathing. Were you doing a specific four, seven, eight breath or box breathing or <coughs> <coughs> just breathing, gentle breathing into my lungs and to switch off, I would use, um, I think it's called a car map. I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically the thing that worked for me was the Oregon storm storm um oh, the storm did it for you <laughs> so the rain and the sound of the storm and the thunder is just a distraction um mm. and then in the morning i would feel much calmer um but then once obviously i came through it once i got through it all um i think it's on the friday i was waiting for that seven day goal um milestone and i felt much better so um i got up and i did too much and then i was floored within two hours and was back in bed i thought right okay i really need to you know which is quite a challenge for me as you know to just just just, just yeah. to do nothing um that, that that adrenaline and relief that you're you're feeling some form of resemblance of normal isn't it you just want to get back to life but yeah that really well you would have seen it with um with Gracie that she was absolutely yeah for a yeah. and then interestingly the next day after that on the Saturday I went and sat outside in the sun in the courtyard and I had lots of neighbours passing by and then I was being told horror stories about day 13 <laughs> oh really and what's what was happening about, on day 13 about the breathlessness and people collapsing and I thought okay so um, I mean I am actually more breathless um weirdly in the last couple of days but but i feel better so it's just a case i think of just going up and down the stairs and just being careful you don't you know it's just walking around knackering um and i've definitely been not sideways in terms of i feel like i've definitely got post-viral tiredness so i've been really taking it easy um watching That's, lots of box sets sorry watching lots of box sets uh-huh yeah it's yeah, that post-viral post fatigue is just going to be so prevalent for, for everyone right now um, of really taking the time. I mean, we don't have, we haven't got anything to get up for um, specifically. So really take this time to recuperate. Absolutely. And um, also, you know, remembering to 
eat well and I mean I, actually I've I was I've been really craving sugar so I've just been going with it and having lots of biscuits and cake that people have dropped around because obviously I've um oh that actually that's another thing that I did I took rehydration salts so I would wake up drenched um oh, in the middle of the night and then have another shower yeah so as obviously my body was sweating it out so they do say if you haven't got rehydration salts to use, uh, put a bit of salt or a bit of sugar in your water. It just helps you absorb the water better. Yes, yes, yes. So you, um, you, you were massively sweating. Oh my God, yeah. And I just thought I can't keep up with it with, with the amount that I'm drinking. So um, that's why I just thought, right, I've got them. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take them. Oops. Oh, don't know I what lost don't carry on carry on but, so so we're now how many days in are we so i'm on day 11 i think it is um sorry just looking for my charger because i'm low on battery yeah i'm on day 11 and so, currently, uh, how how are we how are we finding you today yeah no i'm good i'm sleeping through now and um i'm still uh dave is pummeling my back every night which is brilliant and then i cough and Sorry about the detail, bring up lots of phlegm. So um, it's, it's, I feel like it's coming out of me now. I'm just taking it really easy. Yeah. Uh, drink lots um, and Epsom salt bars and just sitting in the sun. I'm lucky I can, you know, I, I am lucky that I can do that. And we're in isolation. So of course my family, we've got, they have to be, we can't go out to do absolutely anything for two weeks yeah. because they, they might have it. So they're a little bit nervous thinking, have they got it, haven't they? Because they've got four days to go. Well, so think it's really interesting that you're saying that you think that um, your husband might have had having been experiencing it too, but on a low, very low level. So what were his, what are his symptoms then? So he, I mean, we laughed about it in the beginning before I got it because we just get a little tickle, go, oh my god, have I got it? Have I got it? And are we all doing that? Yeah, uh, but he uh, had a very weirdly distended stomach, um, which was really odd, and he stood at the doorway and said look at my stomach I mean it was it was unreal and I said I don't think that's a symptom and um, we don't know if it is or it isn't but and he had um, felt nauseous and had a runny tummy and since then we found out that 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 is um can be a symptom yeah uh, also muzzy head and he's had like low grade sore throat um right. so he might well have just had it really mildly I yeah. hope so so obviously we're hanging out to to have the antibody test as i'm sure the whole nation is yeah 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 and um when you were self-isolating it was a case of you were just having you were only using one room and a bathroom and nobody else was coming in except for your daughter and then yeah. how was she she was coming in with gloves or what was she doing then to keep that isolation going yeah so she was coming with gloves and then going into her room and stripping off uh, washing her hands um and then every day, Dave was wiping down all the surfaces and the handles. And she came in and actually um, uh, cleaned all my bathroom. And then we, she changed my bed. Um, so we've, we've changed the bed a couple of times, actually, just washing and being really careful with the towels. And, um, she needs a touching girl medal, doesn't she? God love her, our little Gracie. Yeah, she really does. And that night when I was, you know, at my worst, she was really, really good and really grounded. And he just said, exactly what I went through you're going to be fine you know you've just got yourself into a cycle of coughing and just her coming in sort of helped to calm me down I was okay it's just you know it's just stopping the coughing oh that's brilliant Fee thank you so much well it's it's so so interesting to hear somebody's personal experience on that and um hopefully there's some some nuggets for that we can all take on board um yeah and and pass this on to as many people as we can so yeah. thank you. Keep it keep in touch with me and let me know how you get on. Cheers. Thanks, honey. Stay safe and well. And you. Bye.